The Adventures of Phil Walter in Antarctica. Now this podcast is going to be one of those technical ones that may bore some people but may find fascinating to other people. This is the podcast where we look at what Phil actually is doing down in Antarctica. Not all the great adventures that he's having, but what he's actually paid to do. Now, I in thought that, that was the adventures. Well, everything we've done so far have been you running off with dogs and getting stuck in the ice and things like mm -hmm. that. So let's look at what you do on a day-to-day -day basis using your specialty as a what? A geophysicist. So you're a geophysicist. Physicist. Physicist. Yes, it's tough. I get it right. Geo meaning of the land and physicist using the physics of the land. Correct. Just go through your different functions. One. Oh, was, that's the chair, sorry, not me. <laughs> I was monitoring a seismic and magnetic... Okay, wait, wait. Seismic meaning the movement of seismic, the earth. Seismic earthquakes. Okay. And now the magnetic, which is the magnetic field of the earth... Yes. As it rotates around the, the sun. The magnetic field comes from currents within the core of the earth. Yep. That's the and molten iron running around yeah. that causes a, a literally a shell of, of magnetic energy around the earth, doesn't it? That's right. North and south. It's a dipole magnetic field. The same Which means as, two poles. Not, yes. Yeah, two poles. Sorry. Same as if you put a magnet down, put a pa piece of paper over it, put... put uh, iron filings sprinkle on that paper, you'll see the shape of that magnetic field, mm -hmm. or the shape of the Earth's magnetic field, is very similar. Yeah. Okay, so those two, those two things, anything else? There was other things. Uh, there's general station duties, which we can get into later. Yep. There was a summer field work where I did uh, survey work around other parts of the Antarctic, which is probably better for another um, yep. podcast another right. day. Okay, so let's get into the two main functions you're at the base for. Um, let's talk us through a, your, one of your daily routines. Okay, routine was I'd get up early in the morning. What's early in the morning? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know again. about seven, again. seven o'clock or something. Seven like o'clock in the morning, that's early. Wow, that's yeah. really okay. So yeah. seven o'clock in the morning. We were, oh. we were working on Mawson Bastard time, which was <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. Mawson Bastard time. Very yeah, good. there was a bit of a time shift. Time shift from what it should have been geographically to suit the running of the base. It's actually and it was called Mawson Bastard Time. <laughs> so that time difference from, say, Perth would be at least two hours or so. Something like that, two yeah. or three hours, I can't remember. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, so that's, you woke up 7 a.m. in the morning, stretched, did you have, did you go to breakfast, did you just go and do your readings first, or how does that work? I had to change records every day without fail. All right. So I get up. Put all my cold weather gear on after I got my pajamas off. That is, yep. hop down to the geo hut. Do you hop actually? I thought you'd just have to walk. Well, it was cold down. There. Well, okay, just checking. Yeah, you know, because there it's an Australian yeah. base. Everybody has to hop around. Oh, dear. sorry, had to put that one in. Yep. Okay, so down to the geo hut, which is the geophysical. Was it hut. down or up to the geo hut? It was down. Actually. Okay, just checking yeah. near, near the pack ups. Yeah, not too far from the shore. Okay, where, where yep. my yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Hopefully, he'll, uh, Phil will be able to put us a little diagram of his of the layout. Yep, so down yep. to the hut. Down to the hut. Grab a canister. Under a red light, I would put nine sheets of photographic paper. Put it in, put the ca uh, lid on. Then I could exit my own little private dark room. We had a general dark room as well down there, mm. but I had my own. In your hut? In my hut. Sorry. The geo hut is your place. That was all mine. Okay, so you went to get the photographic paper in order to take it to get to change your sampling equipment. Exactly. Okay, crap. Right. Yep. So off I go. With nine sheets. Nine sheets. Okay. First three, which are the largest ones. What are we talking what? about? Sorry. So you. Oh, let's see. That would be a cup. I don't know. Because. Four or five feet. So the only thing, because yeah. from my point of view, she, uh, uh, photographic paper is, is what you get on a camera. Yeah. So you're talking about a piece, you know. A, a large uh, piece of paper. Yeah. Uh, that would you fit on a, a drum. Right, on a drum, yep, yep. And that's exactly what I did. I took off to the seismic hut. I was heading due east to that. It's due not, east? Yeah. And right. it only take. Back to I'd my home. I always jog because it'd keep me okay. keep nice warm. warm and fit. Yep. Get to the hut. Do you go past the dogs? No. So here you are jogging with yeah. your, your pack of photographic paper off to the seismic, the seismic 
recording. Right, okay, yep. So get in there, check all the equipment. And now in the actual recording room, mm. uh, I could turn on the red light because of, um, that didn't affect the photographic. Paper. Okay, so it was a sealed room then, was it? So well, there's no sunlight allowed in you. Oh, no sunlight. So you, you, the, yes. the, it's, a, it's a hut type thing. Especially yeah, there's two rooms. Yeah. There was a recording hut that had to be keep all extraneous light out. Yep. And then there was a porch area where we had all our electronic equipment to run the thing. Right. These are quite specifically designed oh, yes. and well-designed things to, to, to do these recordings. They're not, exactly. They're not a sort of donger, you know, a, a steel container. No, not these. Specially made, okay. Specially made for the job. Yep. So you've got your porch sort of thing in, and now you're into the main room, turn the light, turn the closed door, and switch on the red light. Red light, yep. yeah. Now in that room, there were three drums. Yep. You had to take, and wrapped around those three drums were three photographic papers. Right. They would record the vertical, the horizontal. Okay, so that's the vertical, that's the yeah. up and down of the, yeah. the earth. Yes. Oh, okay, and the, the movement side to side of the earth. Side to side. Uh, east, west, and north, south. So, the, so you're saying that the Earth is not just smoothly running around the sun. Uh -huh. it, it sort of shakes and it gives shakes. And it, moves those out. little shakes are called microseismes. Right, and that's just normal. It's like the Earth is is, the is Earth alive. Is where Earth we're on right at the moment has microseismes all the time. So it's it's a, it's a living, moving. It's an organism in itself. You could say that yeah, if you like. Yeah. On top of that, incidentally, uh, there's tidal movements of the Earth. Oh yeah, well that's yeah, that's the yeah, that'll be the moon's effect and everything else. Exactly, just like the ocean, only a lot less. Yeah. you don't notice it unless you got the right instrumentation. Mm. But that's not what we're dealing with. We were dealing with the high frequency microseismes. Okay, so you've got the uh, vertical movement of the of the Earth, and then the side to side movement of the Earth. Okay, two, yeah, two components. And did you say there was three separate instruments? So you do one twice. Is that what I read? You got one that does the vertical, and then one two the east the, west. Yeah, the horizontal east west yeah. and the north south component of the movement. Okay. Yeah. Now the vertical one was the best for picking up a, an earthquake on set. So we're talking about global earthquake or just regional earthquakes. There are no earthquakes normally in the Antarctic continent anywhere. Wow. But the site of Mawson, particularly in winter, was so sensitive that I could pick them up from all over the world. So you literally had ears on earthquakes, you know, earthquakes around the world. Yes. How, how could you detect where they were? You could detect them, but would you be able to say, this one's happening in Italy, you know, this, this the last 24 hours? Not just by looking at it. Because you are part of a worldwide network mm. of earthquakes, and from the onsets in all parts of the world, yeah, because it radiates around like a big circle, yes. isn't it? Like a puddle. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. yeah. Now, Mawson was a very good site because you could turn in winter. You could turn the uh, the sensitivity up really high. That's what you call the gain, isn't it? Yeah, gain. Same. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So we, in summertime, you'd be sort of adjust it down a bit because there's so much more. Yes, in summertime there was no sea ice around, oh, so you got the oceanic in. swell. Now it was not much of a swell in summer around mm. Mawson. It was only you didn't get waves; you just got very, very slight lapping. Yeah, but that was enough to create a lot of noise. It's hard to understand the sensitivity you're talking about in the yeah, sense that it's so sensitive. Like That's an earthquake right. in northern Russia, you could pick it up, but it would obviously be a delay from the a closer observatory. And speaking of northern Russia, yeah, on the island of Kamchatka. That's on the near Vladivostok, isn't it? That's yeah, I know. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's that's, that's on the Pacific they, side of it. That was where Russia had their nuclear testing site. Oh. Specifically chosen there because it's in the middle of a high earthquake zone. Oh, so they could try and mask it. They thought they could mask it. It's really quite clever when you think about it, isn't it? Where you, if you think of that that depth, to say we're where we're going to pick it here, inside a, an active volcano, you know, just like mm -hmm. a, a lair, and then think, oh, we can well, get away with it. Well, it wasn't an active volcano. Well, uh, you know what I mean, but that's yeah, the sort yeah. of thing, that's the sort of location. Yeah. Oh, it's a high uh, earthquake zone Yeah. on the, on the, on the rift, yeah. as it were. And they thought they were really smart, nobody would be able to pick an earthquake from, from an atomic explosion. Wrong. So, so an earthquake would look like this, 
Yeah, yeah. yeah it was and just, an, an, an atomic reaction would look like something. Like it looked different. Yeah. Now, when you knew what you're looking for, which I did the following year, mm. I could um, look at that and say atomic explosion. Atomic so, so would you, would, could you have said, okay, this 1976, the Russians did six nuclear explosions, yes. and the Americans did three. You could pick all that. You could know exactly how many they they did. So the Americans' like, test site was in Nevada. Yeah. There was no earthquakes in Nevada, so any anything that came from that site, you knew that was an atomic. Explosion. But you actually would have been would have been told would, would you be told of American testing. No, no. When I was down there, I, I didn't realise what they were, just that they looked different. Yeah. But when I went when I got back to Canberra afterwards, I went through already knowing where they, about where they were from preliminary locations. Was uh, that a bit of a, a revelation to the Australian government saying, "Oh, you, we can actually detect." Nuclear bomb I don't know. explosions. I don't know. Yeah, because one of these. Oh, we didn't know that. Oh, but look. Yeah. Oh, would you see it? Like you said, you at see some it. stage that would have been that would have been exactly what happened. But I don't know when. Because mm. then you got the French yeah. testing later in the eighties and nineties. In in the. Yeah, I would have picked them up. Yeah, easily. easily. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we digressed a bit there. Sorry about that. that so we back to the back to your. Yeah, oh, sorry, it's my turn. Uh, it's, we back to your uh, hut. We're looking at the horizontal and the vertical. Uh, movement of the earth, the quivering of the earth, and that's Correct. what you're monitoring with these photographic papers on drums. Yeah. So, what is the, is it, how do you, what is it you're looking at? Because you're looking at photographic paper, you can't see anything, obviously. What are you shining on it? Or there was a light it? beam shining on it. So is that a, 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 and that light beam was attached to instrumentation to the seismometers. Right. Now, the two horizontal seismometers oh, were... The, Anyway, when I said there was two I rooms. I did say there's two, told you. There's actually three rooms. I thought it was hut. three. Yeah, you didn't. But. I did. I said there's three and you said, what? Okay. But, uh, yeah. There was another one that was housing two seismometers. Right. Seismometers are the instruments that actually pick up uh, the earthquake, the earth's movement. Right. Ask me how they do that. I don't know how they do that. Did you say it was on... Yeah, it's um, yeah. Good question. I'm good question. Like. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I have read that bit. Or he told me before. Anyway, yeah. how does it work? How it works is you have a casing that's firmly attached to the earth. Right. And how are we talk about big bolts down the, into a concrete slab? Yeah, concrete slab right. sitting on the basement rock, in yep. this case, mm -hmm. which is really good. So it really had to be... Well engineered into the oh, location. Yes. yes. You don't just plonk it on with a crane. No. You really it's have to build it. It's got to be anchored it. firmly. This is the machine. It's on a great it. big cylindrical casing. Yep. Inside that casing was a heavy mass. Right. And it was spring mounted. Oing, 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 oing. Yep. Yeah. Now what happened when the earth shook? Yeah. No matter how small. Yeah. The casing moved, but the mass inside didn't because right. it was so heavy. It had a lot of inertia. Right. Okay, yeah. And the relative movement between the mass and the casing uh, would, would be generate a signal yep. using uh, magnets. Yeah, okay. To go to, beep, beep, beep. Yep. It's like a go to an amplifier, yep. which then went to these light, uh, light beams that then shone a certain distance yep. from that uh, instrument that shone the light onto the photographic paper. Okay, so that's that's the beam of yeah. light onto the photographic yeah. paper and the photographic paper would have moved or something to just to yeah, keep and the, the trace. Photographic, so it's the like drums, a trace. The drums are turning. Yeah, at, a, at its constant speed. Yes, constant yep. speed. And the trace as, with each turn would move along a little bit further. So yep. the drum would turn as the light trace moved along yep. until at the end of the day, the whole record did, did you say that the, the, the piece of paper would move slightly sideways so it would continuously yes. rotate around? And one, one piece of paper would last how long? Like one day. One day, 24 hours. That's right. right. So you end up with a trace line on the paper yep. that you couldn't see until you developed it, obviously. That's right. And mm. that line would deviate and move up and down. Sorry, I'm looking at the moment. We'll move <laughs> around. I don't know if you can see that, but move around like that along the piece of paper. Yeah, podcast people won't know. Sorry, there is that, yeah. Anyway, okay, so you take them off. Do you roll them up and put them into a tube? Yeah, roll them up under red light, of course. Yep. Put them in the tube, put the lid on top. Check everything as you leave. And one thing I forgot to mention, there was two components, seismometers, in that recording hut alongside it. 
There's the third one, the vertical one. Yeah, that's the Now yeah. that yeah. was it beneath, in a pit 17 metres deep. Beneath. 17 metres deep, yes. down underground. Yes, beneath the Cosray hut, Cosmic Ray. That's hut. somewhere else, isn't it? It was on a, right on the other side of the base, up a, up a big hill. Right. And the purpose, by getting it down that low, you cut out an awful lot of the ground noise, mm. and that vertical component in winter could go up to very, very high sensitivities. That's why you could... That's the gain again. The gain, yes. Yeah. Sorry. sorry, so we digressed a bit. We've gone from the, the first hut with the horizontal readings. The vertical component one, that signal went down a cable. So I only had to go to one hut. Oh, thank God for that. Yeah. yeah. The one down the pit, you might once a month go and just check that. You'd just have to climb down it, wouldn't you? You'd have to climb down yeah. the ladder. That pit was actually there predominantly for the... Uh, cos to pick up cosmic rays. Yeah. Now, cosmic rays are rays emanating from outside the planet. Yes. So they're the ones from the solar winds and anything else that's yeah, streaming yeah, around? Yeah, whatever. Whatever causes cosmic rays well, in the universe. Is it the depth important in the terms of 17 metres sounds like a kind of specific depth to filter out any of any... Probably uh, they got as deep as they practically could. Yeah. There's nothing magical about 17 metres. Yeah. But you're drilling through solid Precambrian metamorphic. Oh, how wide would that cavern be? A couple of metres square, something like that. There's only room for one seismometer there. Yeah. No. And you squeezing around it to, to... Yeah, just check, make sure everything's going all right. Yeah. The other, there was two caverns, there, one for the seismometer. The other one uh, was for the cosmic ray. And the cosmic ray one was so deep because they wanted to avoid signals that would come Yeah, in. yeah. So it's filtering all the... Ambient noise, so yes. it can get to the cosmic rays. Yeah. Supposedly. Yeah. Some people were a bit sceptical, like yeah. the guy who was running it. No, this, <laughs> How this is all rubbish. So we've, we've changed the records. So one, two, three two instruments? Done. Three instruments? Yeah. You put load the new paper Back in the on. tubes. But you brought nine bits of, bits of photographic Correct. paper. Wow. Three of them went on. Back on the drums to replace the ones I'd just yep. taken off. And how long does that take to do that? Just literally, is it, is it oh, put in and flip it out? Of a minute. And this, couple is in, of minutes. this is in red light. This is red light. All red light. Yeah. Yes. Couple of minutes to do that. Are they open drums so you could get the light? Or is it like yes. a little pee hole? No, no, no. Just out in the open. Don't do you, forget, you don't have dust problems or anything like yep, that down yep. there. Because I was just thinking, you talked about having to go in and then switching on the red light. So obviously the door when you open... Do you have a, a little anti room? Oh, yeah, it's a little anti room. Yeah, so That's you just have true. to keep the blackness. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. What are you doing with the rest of the um, piece of paper? The, 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 the six We then it? head off to the variometer hut, oh, the okay. magnetic variometer hut. Now, this magnetic field is changing all the time. That's right, and that's what people don't realise. It actually moves. If you look at true north and then magnetic north, there's a variation, and it changes all the time, doesn't it? It literally has to... It yes. messes up your compass. It can do. Yeah, and sometimes okay. it flips the other side, doesn't it? Over time, it has flipped. Magnetic north yes. and south have flipped. Yeah, but not in the lifetime of modern man. No, I know, <laughs> but you, but in the geological record, yes, in the you can I, see... Yes, it's flipped many, many times, yeah. in fact. And people say, oh, I might flip again soon because it's variating, but it, it literally goes, flip. But nobody knows how it flips. Yeah, yeah. They don't, they're not even sure of the mechanism. Something happens in the core of course of the flip. Nobody knows. Yeah, it's Because we've never been mystery. able to observe it. Yeah, no, and it would be a catastrophic event in the globe. It All would. of a sudden, everything north becomes south and south becomes north. It would be worse than that. Yeah. You go through a period with no magnetic field. Oh, there would be a flux time, a time of flux. Yes. Yeah. And during that time... The uh, cosmic rays from the sun and all sorts of nasties will come from outer space and bombard the Earth. Oh. Sure. Without the protection of the magnetic, magnetic field. field. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The, the magnetic field is a protective oh, force field, so. isn't it? It's like yes. a protective layer. And the magnetic field, a lot of harmful particles from the sun Just get trapped into it. Oh, but, yeah. They get trapped and it oscillates around that magnetic field. And they're near the poles, they yeah. actually enter the other upper atmosphere, it creates yeah. auroras. Oh, that's the, so that's the aurora. That's that whole shimmering light yes. thing. And uh, do the auroras occur at the same sort of uh, uh, north and south? So if you're at Antarctica and you're in the North Pole, they sort of happen at the same sort of time? Because the auroras do. don't happen all the time, do they? You get the same auroras in the south, mirror image of the... So when you get the northern hemisphere one, you get the southern hemisphere at the same sort yes. of time. The only that's catch the... is, of course, one's 
generally in daylight and the others in dark, oh, so you can only see one at a time. So we've digressed. We're now going to that's the what you do. magnetic variometer hut. Yep. And we call it the variometer hut because it measures the variations in the Earth's magnetic field, only the variations, mm. not the value, just the variations of the field. So would you be able to detect over a, cu a couple of weeks that it's creeping, you know, further... No, that's called secular variation. Okay. You need minimum of a year to see that. Right. Maybe. On the nautical charts, you get, and it says a variance of such and such per year or something. Yes, that would tell you uh, the variance or declination, as we call oh, it. Or declination, sorry, yeah. Uh, both terms are valid. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they need to know it's varying by so much every year, so yeah. it, it can be corrected for yeah, that. Yeah, because well. you, you swing your compass. Yeah, and that could be in the order of a fraction of a degree. Yeah. But over years. But over years, that's quite a, yeah, that's it quite, can, quite a bit. It becomes significant. All right, so we're at the magnetic place. Yes. And this is what sort of machinery were you looking at there? How, how does that work? We uh, have we have the same sort of drums, right, only okay. this time there's six of them. Yep, one, six, okay, yep, yep, yeah, wow. Right. So it's quite a bigger place, is yep. it? Uh, similar size, maybe slightly. Are they stacked different. on each other or sort of? No, they're just alongside. Right? In a photograph, uh, in, in a red red light zone. Red light. Yep. So the recording is <laughs> so very. Few red lights. The, the <laughs> recording. Sorry. Is actually very similar. Yep. To uh, the the seismic. So you're losing a light beam. Yep. 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 The yep. light beam shining on on the paper. On the paper. Yep. Only the drums are t rotating much more slowly. Those ones only rotate once, one revolution a day. Oh, okay. But that was what the other one was rotating. No, more. that was that was rotating at I don't know twenty. Oh. Twelve times a day or something. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay. There, so there's... the trace was moving laterally. That's right. That's right. That's the trick. You yeah. got me on that one. Yeah. But in this case, it's a single. It, it's so a single one trace. single trace. Yes. These instruments that we used were quite. Have been designed probably well over a hundred years before. We're going to have to quote him on that one because he's a yeah. hundred years ago. What? Recording magnetic changes. They were. Wow, that's extraordinary that they had that sort of. You know, they were working on that Considering sort of technology. It was relatively primitive. Yeah. Two, you had the vertical component. Yep. You yep. had a horizontal component. Yep. And you had the declination or variance. They yep. were the three components to define the field. Magnetism. Yes. Yeah. And um, we had three different instruments to record it. And they had quite complex, it's probably a bit too hard to describe with yeah, You said there were, there were filaments holding magnets. Uh, that's it, right. Two of them. And the magnets would just vibrate like that, and that would cause the... Well, they would rotate. So, for instance, with the horizontal component of the field, you yep. had a magnet hanging on this very, very uh, fragile yep. quartz fibre, and it had been spun a few times. The magnet? Or the the magnet, yeah. And then, and then the Earth's magnetic field would hold it in that position. Right. Oh, so it's is, literally spinning like this, like that. So it's... Sort of spinning like that. Yeah, spinning on the fibre. Oh wow! Okay, so it's it's like a it's like a pendulum, but holding for both sides. Yeah, and you, you and the Earth's magnetic field was holding that into position. Yeah. And as the Earth's magnetic field changed, changed, it, it would, would just... rotate slightly with it. Yeah. Another one was delicately balanced. Up and, yeah. And that would measure the vertical component. Okay. Okay. So that's that's yeah. a magnet bounced like that, and the other yeah. one's like that. Yeah. Yep. And another one, which is also hung on a quartz fibre was the variance or declination. So it was also a magnet on a quartz fibre. Yeah. And attached to these magnets yep. were little mirrors. Oh, okay, so you had a mirror on, oh, yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and then right you... over by the recorders, yep. you had a light beam, yep. which is focused on the... to go to the mirrors, yep. and then it would bounce back to the photographic paper on the recorders. Wow. This is called optical magnification. So it's it's fascinating. Need, it really yeah. is fascinating. I mean, then you think it's a boring podcast. It's not. It's absolutely fascinating. You've got a beam of light on a, fl a, fl a basically a floating magnet yeah. that, as that fl fl fluctuates, it bounces off to a yeah. sheet, and that records the, uh, the body, the, the living. It's like a yeah. pulse for the the Earth, the world. Yeah. And what's amazing is just this optical magnification was enough to pick it up. Yeah. Now we had two. We had a setup for. A certain sensitivity of the magnetic field. Yeah. We had a second lot which was more sensitive again. 
uh, if you wanted to pick up really fine detail. So you replaced all that, you've shut the place up again, and the, one of the other things that just occurred to me is power supply. You, you said, we talked about it be once before, it's like they're all plugged into a power grid. We had the main power supply. Yep. Which is pretty reliable. Didn't yeah, it's go a nice diesel there. generator. Some people do. Yeah. Yep. As you'd need down there. Yeah. But we had another one. They were called cat engine. We called it the cat house or something. The emergency power supply. Right. Which we'll get to later. It played a part in the story, which I'll tell you shortly. Oh, well, I'm sure it does. Yeah. All right. Where to next?